Okay, I just finished the exhaust. I showed you there wasn't a lot to do there, just some cleanup. But speaking of cleanup, there is something else. On all my heads that I do here, one of the things I like to do is attention to detail. And what I mean by this is cleaning the oil passage, cleaning the water passages, because, man, I've seen some of these heads with half the passages blocked off casting flash hanging everywhere and in a performance head it ain't just about the power it's about durability and also about functionality so one of the things I do which I figured I'd show you is right here's a good example I'm going to take and just clean up these oil returns so it glides back fast now look It ain't just about cleaning the flash up, it's about blending so that when the oil comes down, there's nothing to hang the oil up. A quick oil return is good for the motor. And let me tell you what this is also about, okay? It's something else. When a customer gets ahead from you, no matter how good of a port job you do, they look at that, but they also look at other things, like what I'm doing here. Uh, the oil returns cleaned up. I tap and chase all the threads on the head. No head leaves my shop that all the bolt holes all the way around aren't tapped, even ones they might not be using. Because nothing in the world is worse than a customer getting ahead and, you know, they go to bolt it on a work of art, something you poured your heart into and have a bolt hole that you missed that is stripped or threaded or whatever. Now's the time to find that out. So you just have to take a few minutes and I go in here, clean all the passages, do all that, tap all the bolt holes, chase them and clean them. And um, I'll even take, I thread the spark plug holes, and I even take and put, especially aluminum heads, but I've gotten where I do it in all of them, I'll take a little bit of that uh, gray anti seize grease and put in the spark plug holes so they ain't got no choice but to have it on there when they get the head. It's them little things like that, grinding the casting flash, blending the water passages, opening the oil passages, cleaning all the threads, putting the anisees on that is attention to detail. So not only when they get this head have they got a performance head that kicks ass, but they know that when they go to bolt it on that there ain't going to be a problem with it. it. It's just, it don't take long. Yeah, it takes a little bit of time to thread them all and chase them. Yeah, it takes a little bit of time to do this, that, and other. But you know what? I promise you in the long run, if you do this, you will have a very big return base. All right, let's go to town here. Here's some more. Another reason, too, not on these passages, but on the outside of the head, the casting flash, is when they grab the head and get ready to put it on, it sucks. If the casting's sharp, it cuts their fingers. I kind of have a test I do. It's something personal where I go through the whole head with my fingers and easily wipe it, and if I don't have no cut marks on there, then you know what? That means that... Um, uh, there's no sharp edges on the head and they're not going to cut themselves putting them on. Okay. Anyway, I just wanted to show that little part. There I took a few minutes. I clean it. I go through them all. And uh, just part of the process. That's all. And you keep your eyes open because I cannot tell you how many times I've done this and caught casting flaws, cracks, and things because now we're on the edge 
of doing the final blending and the touch up and this is when you better pay attention right here because if there's a crack, if there's a casting irregularity, when the final blending, I've never seen it fail. That's always when something goes wrong and it's hell to go through all this work to find it. So anyway, that's all. Uh, next step, uh, we're going to get mechanical here. We're going to put the bronze guides in, size them, which boy is there a major trick on this because of these cast iron guides. These are real thin, they crack real easy, so I'm going to show you something about installing the bronze liners in here that you, that you better do. Uh, it will save you much heartache. So we do that, and then we do the three-angle valve job, and then we... Okay, now I'm getting ready to put the valve guides in, and although I've already got this video on my um, YouTube channel, there's something a little different here. And it's different enough that I thought I'd point this out to you because you're playing footsie with fate here on this one. This head has a cast iron guide that's inside the aluminum head and the cast iron guide is not very thick at all. And if you go in there normally like you do a normal head and try to put bronze guides in it and use a brooch to size it, you're going to crack the guide. So... This is going to require a little bit of finesse. Let's get you over. Let me go through it step first. Right, let's go ahead and get the drill and the pilot size. See, the camera's interfering with it. I knew it would. All right. There's my little cone that does the balancing. Okay, now at that point I'll take and brush it and we'll come back in a minute to the part that becomes very critical which is where you can bust the guide out but I wanted to show you how I drilled it and set up for bronze guides back in a minute. As I mentioned earlier, there is a trouble area here which you can see a cast iron guide pressed into the aluminum head and it is entirely possible right here that I can crack the guide too. Some of them do, some of them don't. It's a very tricky situation, but anyway, let's go ahead and put the bronze guide in first. That ain't going to be where the problem comes. It's when you're sizing it, which to do that, these are the bullet nose guides with the spiral rings. I like them. get them put in and get right back with you in just a minute let's get us a zoom okay we can pick off at that point when we come back I'll have to trim them and then I'll run the the brooch through them and that's the danger spot where it can crack right along the side of the cast iron guide all right all right the next part is this is a little tool that's got a wedge on it and it goes in there, goes against the guide, wow, trims it absolutely perfect. Okay, now it's ready to size the brooch. Back to you in a minute. We're getting ready to run the brooch through it, and what the brooch has is each brooch has a numerical size to it, two little humps, and when it pushes through, it presses the bronze liner against the guide so that it don't ever come out. Uh, the problem is, with these guides, too much pressure and it'll crack right down the side. I just put one of them in. This is the smallest one I got. Now, after I get done, the valve is not going to fit in the hole. These will have to be hand honed, which I do anyway. So let's go ahead. Let me show you how one of them goes in. Just one pass. Now, if I can do that 14 more times and don't crack no guides, I'll be very happy right now. We'll be on our way. They'll have to be hand honed. All right, let's go ahead and let me set them up and see what we got, and I'll go from there. Step in the procedure. Guess what? Went through all 16, didn't bust no guides. I didn't think I would, but never say nothing until you know. I take this little wedge, it's a chamfering tool, and go through the tops 
of every one of these form a nice little chamfer at the top so that uh, when you're sizing the guide it don't interfere with your field measurements okay they're all done now I'm going to turn the head around this way and I'll have to go in with a drill and a tool to knock the excess aluminum overhang off alright back in a minute you can see here there's a little bit of guide overhang and all I do is take a hand drill with one of my carbide cylinder burrs and I use a swirling motion a little bit to clean it up take my finger and feel it and it's perfectly level with the aluminum it's just a little edge but I don't want no overhang right there where that port's at alright then of course I use this tool this chamfering tool, as you can see, it starts out small and wedges up. I'll put in there and then turn it around a few times and form my chamfer. Then boom, it's ready to uh, start honing and get it to size. Alright, more on that later. Now what I'm fixing to show you guys on this deal is, remember when I went over the valve guides and the fact that they're just uh, a half inch or so diameter, how easy I had to press the bronze guide into the iron, well, unfortunately, I can't size them that way, so they have to be hand honed. Now, hand honing is by far the best way to do it. You can control the quality of the guide in the valve job just like you do a piston and a cylinder bore. The more you get the taper out of it, the better straighter the hole is, the longer the valve job lasts. So it would be a true statement to say that the life of the valve job is absolutely dependent on the tightness and straightness of the guide. I'm using a sun in hone all. What I'm fixing to demonstrate, me and my son are going to show you how I hand hone the guides. Now, I do have a solvent tank and a fixture, but right now I'm out of solvent, so I'm having to do it uh, the old blood and guts way, which is with WD 40 and a hone all, and have a second person hold the head. And I'm thankful I got my 15 year old son Daniel here to help me. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing going, and I'll show you what we're dealing with. What I'm going to do is go ahead and show you on the intake here. As you notice, right now, I can't even fit the intake in. We just did a trial exhaust to see if we got it like we want it, and that's pretty close. Now, I still want it a touch tight because i got to turn the head around and hit it from the other side because you have to go back and forth. One thing I did want to show here that you have to do this is a is a uh, honing dad blame it this that that is a honing straightener this is what straightens the stone and every time you hone one of these you have to go in there and you have to straighten out the stone my dad blame honing bit just came out for some reason hold on a minute This is what gets into the time. That's the reason why my prices are what they are. Okay, I got the stone back in place. What you have to do, and it's uh, uh, perforated there where you can hold on to it, and you make a couple of passes. That wasn't tight enough. Once again, what this is doing is it's straightening the stone. You have to do this every couple of uh, guides to make sure it's straight or else it'll pass the contour into the valve guide. And remember, the name of this game right here is getting it straight as we can get it. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is shoot just a touch. This is WD-40. I'm going to shoot it inside the guide. And I go in here and get her placed. Go ahead, Daniel. Hold on to it. And I squirt on the downward stroke. Hold on to this drill. Let me see if I got the film on. Hold it. Okay. I tell you, doing this where y'all can see it really complicates things sometimes. I'll do the best that I can.
Yeah. All right, that ain't this is what this is what it takes. You do a, a stroke or so, and then you back it out, and then you try to put the valve in. All right, it's going in, but you see how it's kind of fighting. That's kind of what I want because the head bullet now has to be turned around the other way. And then I'll show you my measurement method in a minute. When we get the head turned around the other way, I'm going to show you the measurement method of how I'm determining the clearance. This is about a three-hour episode if you do it right. And if you think about it, at shop rates being at $55 and $60 an hour, they'd have to charge you around $160 to $180 to do this. That's just for the honing. Then you got the installation, you got the guides themselves. So usually a good guide job, hand honing them to fit like this goes for around $200. I only charge $100. Bucks. Now we're going to catch it from this side. Like I said, you have to hit it from both sides back and forth until you get the measurement you want. I'll show you the measurement method later. But um, we'll go ahead and hit this. The hardest thing See, this is doing it manually without a solvent tank, and it's not what I like to do, but right now I ain't got a choice. But anyway, I'm squirting on the downward stroke. All right. It just took a pass or two. And you take it, push it in. Now what you're looking for is this business. See how when I push it, it pulls back in? Let me get you a little bit better shot on it. Because what it's doing is, uh, is you've got the clearance so tight on it that it's uh, the vacuum is sealing when my finger touches over the guy. Look at that. You can actually tell by how far that you push it. And this right here is just, it's almost right there. It's just a touch looser than what I like. But it's 100% better. Now watch what happens when I don't use a vacuum. That's by my finger not placed over the guy. Okay, now it's time to get ready to go to the valve job, but I am going to show you how I measure it when I do it.